Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Harbord streetcar. This is a streetcar that followed a pretty interesting route and whose impact upon the streetcar network can still be felt today. So, let's get into the video. The origins of the Harbord streetcar can be found in the early 1900s with the old Bluer and McCall streetcar. After August 29, 1911, the Bluer and McCall streetcar would operate along newly installed tracks on Harbord Street between Spadina Avenue and Ossington Avenue before traveling north to Bluer Street. This route would become the Harbord streetcar on November 16, 1911. The route would start at a way on Ossington Avenue at Bluer Street and proceed south to Harbord Street. From here, the route would then travel east to Spadina Avenue and then south to Adelaide Street. The route would then travel east to a way at Church Street. It had been speculated that this route was designed to travel from one underserved area to another in between the Toronto Railway Company lines and the Toronto Civic Railway Company lines. This would explain the route's odd meandering route. On June 1, 1916, the Harbord Streetcar would be rerouted at both ends of the line, with the east end of the line now looping via Victoria, Richmond, and Church Streets instead of weighing at Church Street. The west end of the line would see the route extended north of Bluer Street along Ossington Avenue to Hallam Street. From here, the route would then travel west along Hallam Street and Lappin Avenue to a way at Lansdowne Avenue. On September 1, 1921, the Harbord Streetcar would come under the control of the Toronto Transportation Commission and would eventually see further extensions of its service. The first possible extension under TTC control may have occurred on February 22, 1922, with the western end of the route being extended north along Lansdowne Avenue to Royce Loop at DuPont Street. There is, however, conflicting evidence with this, as Transit Toronto states this extension happened in 1922, while historian Lewis Persley says this extension occurred back in 1915. Another future extension would begin to take shape on June 27, 1922, when the Pape Streetcar was established, running from a crossover at Pape Avenue and Danforth Avenue to a crossover at Dundas Street and Carlaw Avenue. On December 16, 1923, the Pape Streetcar would be absorbed by the College Streetcar, which operated along the route between Mondays and Saturdays. Throughout the 1920s, Sunday service on the Harbord Streetcar would see multiple changes. First, in 1922, with the route making use of College, McCall, Queen, and Bay Streets, looping via Front Street, York Street, and Wellington Street. In 1923, Sunday service would be routed to Latrell Loop via a meandering route along College Street, McCall Street, Dundas Street, Broadview Avenue, Gerard Street, Main Street, and Danforth Avenue. That service would only last a couple of months as by the end of 1923, Sunday service was operating to Coxwell Loop via Dundas Street, Broadview Avenue, Gerard Street, and Carlaw, Riverdale, and Pape and Danforth Avenues. This route would be changed once more in 1927, when Sunday service was routed north along Pape Avenue to the newly built Lipton Loop, just north of Danforth Avenue. By 1928, the Harbord Streetcar was now providing Sunday service along Dundas Street and Pape Avenue. This routing would become permanent in 1933, with the College Streetcar being abolished and the Harbord Streetcar taking over the eastern end of its route. Service along Adelaide Street, formerly provided by the Harbord Streetcar, would be provided by the Bathurst Streetcar instead. The next big change to the Harbord Streetcar would come in 1947. By this time, the TTC had begun the introduction of trolley buses, and with the creation of the Annette trolley bus, streetcar service along Hallam and Lappin Streets became obsolete. As well, the Ossington Trolley Bus had replaced the Dovercourt Streetcar south of Davenport Road. Because of this, the Harbord Streetcar was rerouted to Townsley Loop via Dovercourt Road and Davenport Road and Old Weston Road. 
This would replace the service formerly provided by the Dover Court Streetcar north of Bloor, while service south of Bloor was handled by the Ossington Trolley Bus. This does also mean that on a short 400 meter or so stretch of road between Harbord Street and Ossington Avenue, one could see both streetcars and trolley buses operating along the same stretch of road. The 1950s would be the beginning of the end for the Harbord Streetcar. From July 16th to August 12th of 1950, service on the Harbord Streetcar would be temporarily split into two due to construction of the Young Subway and Dundas Station. The Harbord East Streetcar would run its route from Lipton Loop to Church Street and then loop via Church Street, Richmond Street and Victoria Street. The Harbord West Streetcar would run its route from Townsie Loop to Bay Street, looping via Bay Street, Albert Street, and Elizabeth Street. It's worth noting that this loop is no longer possible as Toronto City Hall now sits on top of what used to be the intersection of Albert Street and Elizabeth Street. Service on the Harbord Streetcar would resume as normal on August 12, 1950. The Harbord Streetcar, however, would see its route permanently shortened in 1956 when it was cut back from Townsie Loop to St. Clarence Loop. This cutback in service which was originally supposed to be temporary due to planned construction on an underpass for the nearby railway tracks on Davenport Road. The first cutback in service would occur in 1956 due to water main construction on Old Weston Road. This cutback in service, however, only lasted 10 days. Work on the Davenport underpass itself, however, would begin on January 21st, 1957, and unlike the last cutback in service, this one would be permanent. The Upper Canada Railway Society would note in its February 1957 newsletter that, while the cutback service was supposed to be temporary, the newsletter would say, and quote, No commitment has been made to lay tracks through the new underpass. In November of 1957, a new bus loop was built at St. Clarence Avenue, thus confirming suspicions that the Harvard Streetcar's days were numbered. During construction of the Bloor Danforth subway, the old Lipton Loop would be torn up as it would be the site of the future Pape Station bus terminal. A new temporary Gertrude Loop was constructed immediately north of it. The opening of the Bloor Danforth would mark the end of the Harbord Streetcar as its service was abolished on February 26, 1966, ending 55 years of service. This would also mark the permanent end of streetcar service along Pape Avenue, Ossington Avenue, Davenport Avenue, and Dovercourt Road. Service along Dundas Street would be provided by a rerouted Dundas Streetcar, although this service was rerouted to Broadview Station instead of Pape Station. The TTC's reasoning for the abolishing of the line may have come down to its proximity to the newly opened Bloor Danforth subway and the changing in travel patterns it caused. The Harbour Streetcar's meandering route was at odds with the subway which drew passengers away from the streetcar. Simply put, the Harbour Streetcar route was simply untenable in the new reality where passengers simply used the subway, thus leaving ridership along the Harbour Streetcar inconsistent. The ending of service along Har the Harbour Streetcar was also in line with the TTC Streetcar Abandonment Policy, which foresaw the entire streetcar network being replaced by buses and subways by the 1980s. A variety of bus routes would come along in the following years to replace the this and fill in the gaps left behind by the Harbour Streetcar. At its peak, the Harbour Streetcar ran from Lipton Loop in the east to Townsley Loop in the west via Dundas Street and Harbour Street. One can look at the Harbour Streetcar as a sort of precursor to today's 505 Dundas Streetcar, and in, in a way you wouldn't be wrong in thinking that since it really kind of is. However, it's in the early years that you find out what made the Harbour Streetcar what it was and ultimately what would be the end of it. The route was seemingly created as a means to connect as many underserved areas together in a single go as possible. This would lead to its meandering route through Toronto. However, this route and methodology behind it was a product of its time. 
The bluer Danforth subway would completely change the way the Torontonians moved around the city on the east-west axis, and the Harvard streetcar simply wasn't designed for this new world. That said, however, while the route is officially dead, to me it's dead in name only as much of what made up the Harvard streetcar still exists today as other streetcar routes. Routes such as the 505 Dundas and the 510 Spadina take over where the Harvard streetcar left off at various points in its history, if not exactly. Now, usually I would try to come up with some sort of fantasy scenario where I create a possible modern incarnation of the route. However, with the Harvard streetcar, I don't really think I can or should. As stated before, the original purpose of the route is from a bygone era, and the conditions that made it successful no longer exist, its purpose in this regard having been usurped by the subway. As well, a lot of what made up the Harvard streetcar still technically exists today as other routes. The segment of the line north of Bloor, while served by the Harvard streetcar, was also served by other routes such as the Dovercourt and Davenport streetcars. Those routes to me have a better potential behind them as independent services, whereas a modern Harvard streetcar would be in essence a branch of the Dundas streetcar. That said, however, while I don't see any potential in an independent Harvard streetcar or even a branch of the Dundas streetcar, there is one thing I do believe is worth considering. I am very much a proponent of operational redundancy, and while there is always a lot of talk about it in regards to the subway, it's not often, if ever, that you hear of it about the streetcar network. In this regard, I do think there is merit to laying tracks along Ossington Avenue to Ossington Station, these tracks being non-revenue in nature, with their primary function being for short turns and diversions. I believe that the more stations we can connect the streetcars to, the better it is for both riders and the TTC, even if the tracks are non-revenue. The Harvard streetcar was a product of its time, and that time came and went. I don't see any way it can ever return simply because a lot of what it once was still exists, and what no longer exists either can't or can be served by another resurrected service. So, while the Harvard streetcar itself may be gone, the market left and the service it provided is by all accounts still alive and well, just under a different name. And with that, I will end this video here. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there's more videos like it on the channel and there's more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the Harvard streetcar, don't be afraid to do so in the comments section down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.